Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for Coastal Connections. I am your host, Ashley Smith, and it is almost summertime. We're not there yet. We've got a few more weeks, but as we're gearing up for that, it's almost festival season as well. There's a lot going on here in Hampton Road. So to kick it off, we're talking about the Fun House Fest. Very interesting. And joining me now is Ali Pereira with the Virginia Arts Festival. Good to see Hi, you. Hi, good to see you. <laughs> happy to be here. Th thank you. And I'm happy to talk about this because there's a lot going on in this Fun House Fest. Tell it's us about it. true. Fun House Fest is June 22nd and 23rd. We're okay. super excited. We're coming back to Williamsburg on the lawn of the Art Museums. It's a really unique oh, nice. setting over there um, in downtown Williamsburg. Yeah, and some big names too. And yes, this festival is huge for us. It's curated by Bruce Hornsby. This is wow. the third year we've done this with him. So he really taps on his relationships, you know, and he invites yeah. some of these amazing and unique performers to come and, um, and join him for Fun House Fest for the weekend. So nice. And so you, you mentioned it's a weekend long thing. So yep. kind of break down what's going to be happening each day. What can people expect? Yeah, Friday night, the headliners were so excited. Gates open Friday at 530. Okay. Um, Bruce Hornsby and the Noisemakers are going to kick things off, which nice. is always amazing. We yeah. love Bruce Hornsby and everything he does. Um, and then we're also headlined by Allison Krauss on Friday nice. night. Very so that bluegrass, um, she, you know, she's won 27 Grammys. 27. So she is something. At some point, <laughs> you just put them on the shelf and you walk away. Right. I don't know how she I don't know how she can keep track of all of them. Good. Great. But she's headlining Friday night. Friday okay. night's going to kick things off in a great way. Saturday, um, gates open at 3.30. Okay. So come bring your lawn chair out, spend the day with us. We'll have plenty of food trucks, plenty of beverages you can purchase. And, and you know, have fun with your friends out there on the lawn. And we'll have um, a whole lineup that day. We'll have the Wood Brothers. We'll have um, Amos Lee, which I'm personally really excited about. Yeah. Um, an up and coming artist named Diva Mahal. She's actually the daughter of the blues guitarist Taj Mahal. No. She's going to be taking over. Yeah, we're super pumped to have her. Bruce Hornsby will come back, of course, okay. um, with the Virginia Symphony, which is going to be really, really cool. Nice. And we'll have a second stage full of some up-and-coming artists, some artists maybe you haven't heard of, um, a guy that plays guitar with Bruce all the time named Gib Droll. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of fun and new artists to see at this event. Okay, so let's just say... You know, you're you're coming with someone who's a Bruce fan or you know an Allison fan, but maybe you're not. What else can people do there other than the great music? So much fun to be had. I mean, come and bring, like I said, bring your lawn chairs, bring right. your picnic blankets. <laughs> come and enjoy the the summer weather. This really is what we feel like is our kickoff to summer. You know, I mean, bring a whole group out, sit, come in, engage in all the food trucks. We'll have some vendors out there too, oh, selling cool. some of their stuff in Williamsburg. Um, it's just really, you're going to pick up on the local flair of, of Williamsburg. And, you know, it's Bruce Hornsby's hometown. Right, so it's really right. his way of, of giving back to his community. I love that. And it's funny, you mentioned it's the, the kickoff to summer. I think it literally is because I think we were talking before uh, the show started. Summer starts, was it June 23rd? Is that correct? So yeah. That kind of worked out. So come celebrate <laughs> summer with us. Absolutely. Fun house fest. Yeah, this is a great weekend for us at the Virginia Arts Festival. This is really how we finish up, tie a bow on our season. So what a great way to say thanks for everything this year. And Bruce Hornsby, of course, we love partnering with him. He yeah. curates this festival for us every year, taps on his, his good friends to really come and, and provide a great weekend for us. I love that. Now, when does your season kick back up? So we'll start planning. I mean, we're already planning for next yeah. year, you know, and we do some of the holiday events, some of the fall events, but we'll kick back again next April. Next April. Yes. Okay, so between between June and April, it's just plan, plan, plan. Plan, plan, plan. We do a couple okay. events here and there, you know, as they become available, but um, we really kick back up for 2019 next April. Cannot wait. I love that. So in the meantime, so let's say you're not able to make the, the, the fun, uh, fun house fest, I should say. So let's say you're not able to make that, but you want to be a part of the Virginia Arts Festival. Maybe you want to volunteer next year. How can people get in contact with you, and what do you need from people in Yeah, please do. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, yeah. volunteers we're always looking for. Come out, usher for us at an event. Um, come and meet some of our patrons. I mean, we've got a really great lineup always. I mean, every year, year after year, Rob Cross, our executive director, does a great job of, of tapping on some excellent performing artists. So uh, visit our website, okay. vafest.org. We also have a Facebook page, the Virginia Arts Festival. And um, there you can you can find ways to contact us. Really reach out to us, and we've got a, a whole laundry list of probably things we could get you involved with. That's fantastic. All right, really quickly, tell me again the dates and the information. Well, we see the dates right there, but yeah. uh, really quickly again, just kind of the uh, when the doors open for yep. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Just kind of run that down. Yep. For us. So Friday, June twenty second, the gates open at five thirty. The show will start at seven. Mm -hmm. Saturday, June twenty third, the gates open at three thirty. The show will start at five. Three thirty. Oh, Friday and Saturday. I yeah. Don't know why I'm thinking Friday, Saturday, no, Sunday. Yeah. Friday and Saturday yes. is going to be the Fun House yeah. Fest and all that information again on the website as well. Funhousefest.com. Fantastic. And also on 13newsnow.com as well. So make sure you check that out. Nice. Allie, great to see you again. And, Likewise. you know, hopefully it'll be before April of next yes, year. Yes, I hope you again. so. <laughs> For sure. Thanks, we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome back to Coastal Connections. I told you we're coming up on festival season and we have a couple that are coming up in June. Huge festivals for our area. We're talking about Harbor Fest and the Bayou Boogaloo. So if you haven't been to either one of those, you're going to find out a lot about them right now. Joining me are Rebecca Duckett and Jordan Lett. We are excited to see you both here from Fest Events. Thank excited you for having here. us. You guys have a lot going on in the next month or so. I mean, it's going to be a busy summer, I'm sure. But let's talk about Harbor Fest first. It's always so fantastic every single year, but talk about what people can expect this year. This is the 42nd annual, Rebecca? Yes, so Har Norfolk Harbor Fest, 42nd annual. It is the largest, longest running free maritime festival in the nation. So we are excited to keep it moving. The festival kicks off June 8 at noon with the Parade of Sail, which is, as you know, when all the boats, large, small, tall ships, everything just come rolling right in and, and we move right, right into the festival from there. That's awesome. And there there are so many uh, different vendors and booths. And I mean, it's just it just takes you forever to walk that entire space. Jordan, are, are we looking for uh, a lot more this year about the same? I mean, I feel like you had a million last year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Harbor Fest is always a big event. Yeah. Um, so I mean, we're, we're going to bring in some really cool vendors, as always. Um, you know, there's something for everybody at Harbor Fest um, in terms of food, in terms of retail shopping, in terms of entertainment. Um, there's there's really something for everybody. I mean, really, like you can just bring out the whole family, your friends, everyone. Someone's going to find something to do. Yep. And yeah. speaking of entertainment, um, we have three different stages where musicians perform all weekend long. So it's June 8th through June 10th, Friday through Saturday at Town Point Park and here in uh, downtown Norfolk. So Friday we have kind of an indie rock music theme with the nice. American authors, local favorites, Super Doppler. Saturday we have kind of a southern rock Saturday with Ooh. Firefall, Atlanta Rhythm Section, and Pure Prairie League. And then Sunday we tap into our soul a little bit with uh, some R&B and uh, with uh, the Commodores, um, Thomas McClary, the Commodores, nice. and the Family Stone, which we're just pumped about. Oh Super excited. Gosh. A little something for everyone, no matter what your musical taste is. I mean, seriously, like, you know, it's one of those things where you can go every single day and it feels like a different festival. You Absolutely, know what I mean? Because yeah. there's just so much going on at yeah. all times. And I do want to talk, too, for those that have not been to Harbor Fest or know a lot about it, the Parade of Sail is such a big deal. So, Jordan, tell us a little bit more about that. For Like, you know, just... Parade of Sale 101, if, you, if you've never heard of it before, what can people experience with this? Sure, so obviously the name of the event is Harbor Fest. We're, we're celebrating our, our harbor, our, our region's uh, maritime, you know, heritage and history. Um, and the Parade of Sale is what kicks off the event. It's these beautiful tall ships that are pulling in down the Elizabeth River. Um, I mean, it's like you're watching pirate ships pull in or something right before your eyes. It's, it's, it's really something next level. Um, as she mentioned, it's at noon on Friday, and it's the, the big kickoff to the event. It's so beautiful. And we have to tell you about the fireworks, too, on fireworks. Saturday, yes. June 9th. It is the biggest fireworks show on the East Coast. We are so happy to be a part of it. Um, it's, I mean, it just seems like it goes on forever. Yeah. And you can just watch it right on the on the waterfront. And the event is free, free right. and open to the public. So <laughs> this entire three-day festival yeah. where all of these things are, are going on, it's, it's open, free and open to the public. So we're just really, really excited oh, about, right. about this festival. Now let me ask you, is the Bayou Boogaloo, is that also free or what's the deal with the Bayou Boogaloo? So the Bayou Boogaloo is a ticketed event, and okay. Bayou Boogaloo is it's our 29th year. It's okay. basically our annual love fest to New Orleans, Louisiana, <laughs> Cajun food, um, Cajun music. Yes, it's just, absolutely. Like, we're Art. so excited. Art. Art. Yes, yeah. I yes. I love that. So what does the ticket buy you? What do you get for the ticket? It gets you into the uh, event. Um, like, as she mentioned, there's a lot of entertainment, national entertainment. All of them are from the uh, New Orleans Bayou, uh, you know, the Bayou area, uh, region of the the country and um, so it's all real authentic um, but a lot of them are big national entertainers so you get you get, you get to see all those entertainers um, we mentioned you know the art we bring up the Louisiana Craft Guild yeah artists straight from Louisiana that um, you know it's just very unique types of art so you get to you get to be able to browse through those um, artists um, and then all the authentic food that you get to pick from that you wouldn't be able to get unless you were in New Orleans. New Orleans. Right. <laughs> um, so that, that's what your ticket will get you. And we were talking um, during the commercial break about alligator sausage. <laughs> that's a thing, I, which I have not had. I've also not had uh, crawfish. Which 8,000 pounds of crawfish just, will be at this festival I, from I'm, New Orleans. I'm going to have to. I have to try You have it. to come. I get you it. have to come. You've convinced me. I'll be there. <laughs> you can see information right there on your screens, the phone number to call, the email, 
URL uh, or the website, I should say, to check out for uh, fest events in general, but specifically the Harbor Fest and Bayou Boogaloo coming up next month. So Jordan and Rebecca, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Busy thank you. Summer, summer, we'll see you soon. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Coastal Connections. We want to move on now to the MacArthur Center in Norfolk. Always something going on at MacArthur Center, especially during the summer and late spring, of course, which we're in right now. But there's something new or relatively new, I should say, that you might not know about and you may want to get involved in. So joining me now is Karen Husselby with the MacArthur Center, the marketing director there. You're here to talk about the Live 360 program, Karen. Great to see you, first of all. Good to see you, too. This is really cool. Like, Explain exactly what this whole Live 360 program is about. So it was started by our owner, Starwood Retail Partners, and we launched at MacArthur Center in September of last year. And Live 360 is really about community engagement and partnerships. Mm -hmm. So it's about bringing different organizations, different individuals into the mall for classes and workshops and different programs. And we do that in a variety of places throughout the shopping center. So it's not just a shopping center anymore. I mean, obviously you can come and you can shop and you can dine and you can see a movie, but you also might be able to take a yoga class or you might learn how to knit or learn how to sew or do things like that. So it's really exciting for us. There are so many programs here. We can kind of go through a few of them and get some more specifics. There are bike rides and fit classes. So a lot of health kind of oriented classes that'll be happening right in the middle of the mall. Yes, absolutely. So I'm excited to share with you MacArthur Center. We just won um, a bike friendly business award by the American League of Bicyclists and that we're the first shopping center in the country to get that award. So we're super awesome. excited and we have a partnership with um, Social Cycle Norfolk. Okay. So they do bike education classes in our Live 360 studio. So you can come and learn like biking 101 or how to commute or maybe learn about the Elizabeth River Trail. And we also do a program called Manic Monday with Norfolk Babes Bike and that's really <laughs> for um, amateur women riders. So you might be either uncomfortable on a bike or new to a bike or you don't want to bike by yourself. And so we have a group that meets every Monday night on the MacArthur Center Green at six o'clock and they bike through the city of Norfolk. And then a lot of times they come back at the end of the night and go to California Pizza Kitchen and have a meal. And just, it's a nice way to make new friends if you're new to the community or if you're really into biking, you know, it's people that have a similar interest to you. So we're excited about that. That's awesome. I mean, it's just fantastic to be able to offer these types of things for people in the community Community. Maybe uh, just, they just want to meet people that they haven't met before, and that sort of thing is happening at MacArthur. Absolutely. And I, I have to tell you, I'm really excited about this cooking class. We were talking about it during the commercial break because I don't cook. So, you know, hopefully there will be people in the class that just want to learn, but then you're maybe right beside people that cook all the time. So is that the whole point of the class? It is the whole point of the class. And again, it's about community, right? And, and meeting people in your community. So we're doing the cooking classes at California Pizza Kitchen. Our nice. last one is May 24th this year. Okay. And then, or not this year, but this um, season. And then we start up again in um, September, October, in the okay. fall. Okay. This one is actually a mixology class. So you'll be able to make your favorite cocktails. Oh. Um, and it's $20 a person and that includes food and two drinks. Okay. And we take kind of the back part of the restaurant and we bring out the tabletop cookers. Okay. And so you've got all the food, all the different ingredients all around a table with all of your friends or soon to be friends. Yeah, right. <laughs> and Mike, who's the general manager, instructs everybody and you make your meal. And then you sit down in one of the booths and you eat what you cooked and you, you know, like I said, make some new friends and, and enjoy some food and some conversation with people. So it's really fun. And it's, it's a fun and engaging way um, to, to take a cooking class and you know if you if you've been to California Pizza Kitchen or you've been to MacArthur Center just you know a number of times it's kind of a different element to the exact same place that you may have passed a dozen times right. before yeah that's really cool and then you have a, a live 360 studio is that part of the mall or how, where, where is that? We do, yep, so it's on the first floor in the Dillard's Wing, it's right near Cinnabon, so that's okay. a pretty popular <laughs> location, everybody knows where yeah. that is. Yeah. Um, and it's a big space that we took and we transformed it into our studio, so we have a partnership with the Norfolk Public Library. Okay. So we have comfy couches and chairs and we have a whole um, selection of books and magazines that people can hang out and read. We've got a children's area with arts and crafts tables, a big chalkboard, and then the back part is really our studio, so that's where we do all of our classes. So we have okay. Latin dancing and we have yoga classes and we have mixed fit and it's also available for renting. So if you're looking for a fun place to have a kid's birthday party or um, even an anniversary party, it's very inexpensive. It's $50 an hour wow. and you can rent the whole back part of the space. Ooh. 
That is fantastic. Okay, how can people get in contact with you? I know there's uh, the website there and the phone number. Any other ways that you would like for people to get in contact, maybe even for renting out the studio? I was going to say, if you go on the website and click on our events tab, it has all the information about all of our Live 360 events and all of our mall events. Um, or you can call the number that's on the screen and just ask for me directly, and I would be happy to help you. That's awesome. Really cool program happening right now at MacArthur Center. Karen, thank you so much. Thank you. It. We'll Thanks. see you soon, I'm sure. Okay, good. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Coastal Connections. You know, we've been talking about, you know, summer's coming up, festivals are coming up. So we're talking about another wonderful festival here in Hampton Roads. It's a patriotic festival, happens at the Virginia Beach Oceanfront, and we are coming up on the 14th year for the festival. We're really excited to talk about this one. So joining me now is Preston Midget, the Vice Chairman of the Patriotic Festival. We are so thrilled to have you here today. Well, thank you for inviting us. We are excited to talk about this festival. I was telling you during the commercial break, uh, you know, some of the the members here at 13 News Now, we're talking about how beautiful it was last year. What can people expect this year? Well, we have a big concert stage set up at Fifth Street on the beach, uh, huge American flag flying over the stage. Um, we'll have three days of the top country music uh, entertainers. Friday night is Brett Eldridge, Saturday night is Cole, I mean, Saturday is uh, Brantley Gilbert, and then Sunday is Cole Swindell. Wow. All three of these guys, if you're into country music, they are they are really the thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know you you go down there and you sit on the beach in the sand and you have a a, a very uh, a good experience. Absolutely. And um, it's just an intermingling. You know, we were talking about that too of military members, family members, locals, tourists. You know, how beautiful is it to just see everyone come together for this festival? Yeah. It's it's a it's a family event. Um, we're not only we're celebrating the military in our area. Uh, we have. Um, Lots of locals come down. Lots of tourists come down mm -hmm. to book the hotel rooms, and and uh, it is actually taking a weekend that typically for the resort, you know, people come to the resort for Memorial Day weekend, and then they don't come back until right. after school gets out. Well, this weekend, from the economic impact of this festival, it has become one of the top weekends of the whole of the whole season. Um, there's three festivals that are that are um, economic impact is right. really. Uh, over the line, and, and this is one of them. You were telling me um, as well during the commercial break, you're expecting what over a hundred thousand people? We'll probably, depending on the weather, we'll probably do at least a hundred thousand people coming and going uh, because it's all day. Right. Uh, we've got from 13th, no, from 20th Street down to 5th Street. Wow. Uh, not only on the the stage area around the 5th Street area, but in the the northern sections from the the 13th to 17th, 19th Street. Oh. There is uh, the USO does a military displays, and they have a whole section around 17th Street that's set up with um, the hovercraft. The military brings in all of their uh, displays, and their uh, it's like a tent city. Shows how the military lives on the beach, and you can walk around and experience that. Of course, all along the boardwalk will be uh, all of the military um, vendors. Uh, yeah. The services will be there, uh, showing what they do. Um, there's something unique that's going to be, could be fun. Uh -huh. They have a challenge, the SEAL Team Challenge. Uh -uh. And <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a race oh, no. that you are actually, you're on the beach. It's a three mile race and it's, it's like an obstacle course. I bet. And you can get a little taste of what it would be like to become a, uh, to be a SEAL. I'll watch. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, <laughs> I already know what to expect with that. I don't want to embarrass myself, but hey, listen, if you're out there and you think you got what it takes. Give it a shot. That's cool, though. We were talking too about all of the different performances. There was one that was really interesting: the the, um, the Marine Corps Silent Drill Team performance. Yes. So tell me about that. What what goes into that? That's going to be at the 17th Street stage. Okay. It is a precision team drill team. If you haven't seen it, these guys are so in sync with each other. Um, it is a it's a national, very uh, prestigious event for the. For the Marine Corps. I can only imagine. I can just, uh, again, just the chills that you feel yeah. when you watch, you know, our military in action and you get to interact and mingle with them. I mean, it's going to be an mm -hmm. incredible weekend. Really quickly, um, there's also a, a freestyle MX bike rider performance. Yeah, have you seen the, the, the guys that do the performances on the, on the, the ramps with yeah. the, the small bikes? Uh, they are uh, 
spinning and doing tricks on bikes that you can only imagine. Exactly. Again, I'm staying on the ground, mm -hmm. I'm staying away, <laughs> and I'll just watch and enjoy. <laughs> so there you can see the Patriotic Festival June 1st through 3rd at the Virginia Beach Oceanfront, and you can get your tickets there at Ticketmaster.com. And of course, we'll have information on 13newsnow.com as well. Preston, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Awesome. We'll be right back. <laughs> We are back with more Coastal Connections and we have one more festival to tell you about happening next month. If you are a fan of jazz and R&B, listen up. The Hampton Jazz Festival, it's on its way. So joining me now to talk more about that is Doretha Spells with the Hampton Jazz Festival. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. It's a wonderful festival every single year. We were talking during the commercial break about um, the wonderful artist lineup. It's great every year. Tell us who we can expect this year. Well, this is our 51st year. Um, this year we will have um, Charlie Wilson, uh, Avery Sunshine, Jasmine Sullivan, um, a local group, Custom May. We always try yeah. to have one local group. Uh, and then it will be Frankie Beverly and Mays, uh, Boys to Men, Layla Hathaway, Kenny G, um, Confunction, and then Escape. So it's going to be a great weekend. It's a Three huge days. Huge lineup. Yes. <laughs> And, and, and there are ways where you can uh, purchase like all three tickets at the same time, right? It doesn't have yes. to be like, you know, separate Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Nope, you can get all three tickets at the same time. That's fantastic. Yes. Okay, so Hampton University is also involved with the festival. Can we talk more about their involvement and what they're doing as a part of the festival? Well, actually, the genesis of the festival started with Hampton University, then Hampton Institute in 1968 when they're celebrating their centennial. And George Ween was on the campus in 1967, and he approached the president then uh, Dr. Jerome Hotman about doing the festival at that time he was doing the Newport Jazz Festival okay. and then we started the Hampton Jazz Festival and here we are now 51 years later and it's still going on we did the first two years on the campus of the University at um, Armstrong Stadium okay. and then in 1970 the Coliseum opened and we had the first um, festival in 1970 at the Coliseum which turned out to be perfect I understand they said it rained that whole week weekend oh, no. and so that was our first time being inside <laughs> oh, so no we've doubt. had that partnership with the city George Wien and the university for 51 years and it has been just tremendous I, and I know I've, I've attended for the last few years or so and I mean it's just jam-packed in there you know and I know it's not just folks from Hampton Roads there are people coming from I mean all across the country I'm guessing so what does that mean for the Jazz Festival to attract people from all over well it's a time of a family coming together yeah. and friends it's like a Union. Yeah. Every year, everyone looks forward to it. We have folks, uh, people that come from D.C., the Maryland area, Texas, they come from all over. Oh. And it's just a great opportunity for everyone to come together and just have fun. Mm -hmm. And then the, the entertainment is awesome. And so it just turns out to be a great opportunity for everyone. You know, one of the things that we talk about here, um, you know, some of the folks who are 13 News now, how these artists, you know, th these are folks that, you know, you may have grown up listening to. Maybe there are some new folks that are in the mix. How do you all come up with this lineup every single year? It just seems like it caters to so many different generations of listeners. How do you come up with this lineup? Well, the committee listen to our, 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 our constituents. They send us um, emails, they uh, tell us who they would like to see. Of course, then we get together with uh, our promoter and then we contact the talents to see if they're available. Mm -hmm. But we try to hear the people and give them what they want. And most of the time they give us a list and say, this is who we would like to see this year. And if the talent is available, then we are able to make it happen. That's awesome. Now is the Hampton Jazz Festival, because I've wondered this, um, is it, you know, there are a number of festivals kind of around the country, and I know along the East Coast that also are jazz festivals. Is Hampton a part of like a, a, a kind of a, I don't want to say franchise per se, or, you know, as far as the different talent going to the festivals kind of up and down the East Coast or around the country, or does Hampton Jazz Festival operate by itself and that's it? It operates by itself. Wow. It's a partnership with George Ween, Hampton University, and the city of Hampton. Wow. So it's, you put this together and then the artists go their separate ways. There is no group just kind of traveling across the country. No. That's fantastic. We put it together and they, they go to their next event. 
so awesome. Yes. So let's say people are interested in seeing an artist next year or so, how can they get in contact with you? Well, we have a website. They should go to the HamptonJazzFestival.com website, okay. send their email in, and then the, uh, the committee will review it, and we go from there. Awesome. Thank you so very much. Again, the Hampton Jazz Festival at the Hampton Coliseum, June 22nd through the 24th. And Ms. Aretha Spells, we appreciate you for being here and talking about the Hampton Jazz Festival. It's truly my pleasure, and I just wanted to let everyone know tickets are still available. They're still available. There you go. Have a great day.